Are you working in an industry that needs to filter plastics? Then you're probably going to need an extruder screen. Don't worry, I'll explain everything you need to know. Stick around. Hi, I'm Sam Badger and I'm the sales manager for Engineer Products here at WS Tyler. Filtration is an important process in almost every industry, from pharmaceuticals to gas and oil to agriculture. And in a lot of cases, even plastics need to be filtered from their impurities. That's where extruder screens come in. WS Tyler has been a leading innovator of woven wire mesh for over 150 years. And we've engineered mesh to fit almost any filtration application that will ensure technicians the best possible results. So in this video, we'll go over what an extruder screen is, the components of an extruder screen, their cost, and when extruder screens should be replaced. Screen packs, often referred to as extruder screens, are either single layer or multi layer wire filtration systems that are welded together and made into specific shapes and sizes. They're generally used for plastic extrusion or for any material that needs to be melted and filtered of contaminants before forming. Because it's woven wire mesh, your filter can be completely customizable on every possible specification, and different layer configurations and micron ratings can be used depending on the level of decontamination required, pressure requirements, or characteristics of the material being filtered. These screens are change frequently during a filtration process and typically are not able to be cleaned or reused. Extruder screens are a key part of any polymer or plastic extrusion process. And though they cannot be reused, screen packs have to be engineered to precision. There's a few components to an extruder screen that are fundamental. These components should help you select the best manufacturer for your process to offer long-lasting and reliable screens. The mesh in your screen, whether single or multi-layer, need to hold up against any material you're filtering. You don't want your screen to rust or corrode during your process. Stainless steel is preferred if the polymer being processed could corrode mild steel, or if the chance of corrosion by oxidized steel screen material should be avoided. A nickel alloy mesh should be used for extruding fluoropolymers that could corrode typical stainless steels. And square mesh is most widely used for its flow capability, but filter weaves can also be used for finer filtration. Extruder screens can be made with both one layer of wire mesh or multiple layers. A single layer is used when virgin material with few impurities is being processed. Multi-layer is used when reground or recycled material is being used or when a higher standard of cleanliness is needed. There's typically a more coarse protection layer that the melted polymer comes through first. This protects the finer filtration layers from debris or damage, pressure, or the swirling motion of the plastic melt. Another coarse layer faces the breaker plate to support and protect the finer mesh layer from being pushed into the breaker plate holes. Configurations vary depending on the wide variety of factors like material type, cleanliness requirements, but extruder screens typically contain two to five layers. That layer could be held together with spot welds, a rim binder, or the layers could simply be unsecured and stacked to the desired configuration. Extruder screens usually come round or kidney shaped. Round screens are usually used one at a time and the filtration process is stopped in order to change the screen. Kidney shaped screens are used in multiples around a screen changing wheel that automatically advances to the next screen when clogging or a pressure increase is detected. This type of system allows the process to run uninterrupted and an operator can replace clogged screens while melt flow continues with new screens. Sizes vary widely with each style, depending on the type of material and volume desired. Round screens can be less than one inch in diameter or exceed 16 inches in diameter. Likewise, kidney-shaped screens typically range in size from two to five to three inches to a larger three and a half to six and a half inches. The price you can expect to pay for an extruder screen is completely dependent on a number of factors, including size, shape, number of layers, alloy, quantity purchased, the cost of each individual mesh specification chosen, and any special processing required. It's difficult to determine the cost of a screen pack without knowing those factors, but a good rule of thumb would be if it's single layer, it's gonna cost less than a multi-layer, unless it's an exotic alloy, and then size and shape also come into play. If it's a screen pack that we sell, then it's gonna cost less because we don't have to create a new die set. And if it's higher volume, it's probably gonna cost less because we're gonna be able to run more at a time. While good extrusion screens are a quality product, they are made to be used, changed, and discarded at regular or frequent intervals. How often they need to be changed out is gonna be dictated by your process. How dirty the melt is, or how much of the impurity needs to be taken out. Screens with clean melt running through them could last days or weeks without change or replacement, while dirty recycled material may need the extruder screen replaced several times per hour. Thanks so much for watching. 
If you have any questions, fill out our contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click the second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name's Sam Badger and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.